Hi, everyone, and welcome to Aspire IQ's Community and Coffee Office Hours. My name is Anna Gustorf, and I am a marketing strategist on the Aspire IQ team, and I am joined by my lovely colleague, Madison Smith. And today we are going to be talking about the wild and crazy world of TikTok. Um, so we're going to do kind of a deep dive into the fate of TikTok, kind of talk through um, the questions that we're getting from our brands and, and how we're kind of talking those through with them and really just kind of dive into it. So I want to start with you, Madison. I know that you've been doing a ton of research and I have too, and mostly in the middle of the night, just scrolling through TikTok. I would love to kind of hear your perspective on how everything has been playing out in the media and kind of where you see TikTok, but would love to hear kind of a, a background from you on all things TikTok. Yes, well, this has definitely been a very interesting saga for TikTok. As you all know, it's the popular app that's owned by Chinese technology company ByteDance. It's the sixth largest social network and has really been a creative outlet for over 800 million active users worldwide and close to half of those between 18 and 24 years old. So, so far, TikTok is the number one downloaded app of 2020 and has the highest social media engagement rates per post with an eight to 9% engagement rate for those with less than 10,000 followers. And that's compared to Instagram, which sees a three to 7% engagement rate for that same follower group, which is wildly insane. Um, but unfortunately, the incredible app that I personally have grown to love has really become a point of contention for international regulators. It was actually banned in India. And now the Trump administration has decided that it's a potential threat to US national security and to the US economy because of how it collects information on US users and could basically share that information with the Chinese government. So to go over the whole saga that basically TikTok has been going through in the past couple months, in August 2020, privacy concerns escalated and Trump said that he would ban TikTok in the US. Basically, he issued an executive order that bars American companies from doing business with ByteDance or its subsidiaries. And as of just a couple of days ago, Trump tentatively approved a deal for Oracle and Walmart to partner with ByteDance investors on creating this US company of TikTok, which they're going to be calling TikTok Global. So Oracle would own 12.5% of the new company called TikTok Global providing secure cloud computing services, and then Walmart would buy 7.5%, and they would provide e-commerce, fulfillment, payments, and other services to TikTok Global as well. So this really has the potential to end the months-long drama over the app's future in the US, and basically because as the new TikTok Global, it would now meet a US government requirement that the company has to have a majority of American ownership. So this, I mean, this really has been shaking things up all across the board. The number one TikToker, Charlie D'Amelio, who has 87 million followers, she just announced last week that she's joining Triller, which I didn't even know what that was. I, I work at social media and I didn't even know what Triller was. It, I had to look it up. In my opinion, I mean, I think her decision will probably go the way of Ninja's did. And if you don't know who Ninja is, he is the most popular gaming influencer in the world. And he actually ended up leaving Twitch to become the face of this platform called Mixer, which was owned by Microsoft, that ended up getting shut down. So he's now back at Twitch. So now I'm kind of like, hmm will this go the same way? I kind of think it will where, you know, she's going to jump off for a little bit and she'll probably come back to TikTok. But so this whole situation, this whole saga has been going on for a while, but Anna, what, I mean, based on all of this that's going on, what, what do you, what do you think about the whole situation? Yeah, I think something that was really interesting to me 
with those kind of major players in TikTok leaving is that um, that kind of signaled to me and to people that I've been, been speaking with about this that it's not necessarily like the platform itself that they find the value in, it's like the community. And I think that really shows that these major players that are making that jump really see the value in kind of the community that they have built, that TikTok has built, and they, you know, uh, by jumping over to another platform are basically saying to all of us that that community can be replicated and their following can kind of be replicated on these new platforms. And I think something that was really interesting to me, um, hearing that all of these people were making that jump, and, and I agree with you, I'd never heard of Triller before either. So that was really interesting to me, but, um, uh, what that kind of signaled to me as well is is the fact that they didn't make the jump to you know say Instagram or Snapchat or something that is a little bit more um, you know established and larger is that you know they kind of the biggest value that they see from TikTok is kind of this like starting from scratch community. They can kind of build their own rules. It can kind of be all of their own, and um, so I think that's definitely really good feedback. And I hope that, you know, Instagram is kind of taking that into account as they're building their new features and kind of building out their, you know, TikTok kind of competitor reels is that, you know, these t huge TikTok stars kind of feel more comfortable on these other platforms. And I, you know, hope that they take the opportunity to look within that and see how they can improve their own things. But just in general, I think, um, like I said, I, I think it's a really big tell that they are more or less willing to kind of make a jump um, now that TikTok is kind of still up in the air. So I thought it was really interesting, but I agree with you. I think there's a huge potential that they could just eventually go back if everything's fine. Yeah, that's interesting that you bring up Snapchat, actually, because, I mean, we had the same kind of thing, not necessarily from like the legal standpoint with Snapchat, but we did see, I mean, a mass exit from Snapchat. And so many people were in, so many brands were investing in Snapchat all to have, I mean, now we don't even recommend now, like to, for people to work on Snapchat. Like it just, it doesn't even make sense anymore. And I mean, it, a large part of it was due to Instagram basically taking over their exact format and just putting it into their channel and the analytics are so much better that you get from Instagram stories content than you ever did on Snapchat. And now that with TikTok, I mean, stepping away from the legal side of things again, like now that Reels has been launched, it's like, will the same thing happen? So I think that the biggest question we have nowadays is in, in that term of the fact that Reels has been launched, and now with all this legal issues that are going on, should brands even be investing in the platform? Because either it's going to go, I mean, maybe it won't, but it could potentially go away from a legal standpoint or it could potentially go away from just like another technology taking over their entire format. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think that's a really interesting question and definitely one that we have seen from our brands lately is, you know, if, if, because it's so up in the balance, do I even take the time to dip into this? And I know, you know, a lot of the companies that maybe were a little bit more traditional and um, were afraid to kind of dip their toe into an experimental platform like TikTok. Um, now they're like, should I even venture into it? And I would say right now, 100%, you, they absolutely should. Um, I think, a big reason why I think this is a great opportunity at this moment is because it's so in flux, the, um, the cost of buying, you know, some videos through TikTok is incredibly low right now. And so I think this offers brands a true, you know, time to kind of experiment in asking for TikTok videos. And at the end of the day, if it does go away, you know, you at least tried it because um, you know, what we've seen just in general through brands that we have helped them with TikTok campaigns is that a big benefit of TikTok is just strictly impressions and brand awareness and really gets your name out there, gets people talking about you. And if that 
you know, if the platform itself goes away, it's not like you're going to lose those impressions. Like that, that is a lasting, um, you know, benefit of it. And just recently we worked with a hair care brand that, that, um, we ran a TikTok campaign for them and they, um, invested, it was a pretty small budget, um, for TikTok specifically, but their Instagram budget was, I think around like four times what they spent and they got like four times as many um, influencers and then just like this tiny little group of TikTokers and they ended up having twice the amount of impressions and then the exact same amount of engagement. So I think it just really shows the opportunity on TikTok to, um, I don't know if it's just right now because people think it's going away. So, so many people are on it, which I think, again, kind of backs up the point of like, you absolutely should, you know, invest in this channel um, while you can. But like I said, it just, um, it, it shows that even a small little investment in tester is, is really lasting because impressions will last forever and will really um, carry you a long way and, and just, you know, and just in general too, not to go off too much of a tangent of, of brand awareness, but, but, you know, we hear brands coming to us all the time of their number one thing that they want to achieve through influencers is increasing their brand awareness and um, really, you know, getting people talking about their brand, increasing their share of voice. And, you know, if you can go to a platform that can deliver the like all of those really meaningful impressions and on top of it seeing really meaningful engagement i think you know it's a missed opportunity not to take advantage of that i also agree i think that brands should still continue to invest in tiktok because i think what sets tiktok apart is one their algorithm the community that they've been able to build around this idea of just authenticity and just like being yourself and i feel like that is what instagram used to be at the end of the day like instagram is a lot more you have to put a lot more effort into the content you create as opposed to where tiktok like a lot of it's just people talking into their camera for like 15 seconds or just like saying something funny or doing a green screen of a funny tweet that they're you know wanting to talk about so that's why i think that you should definitely continue to invest in TikTok because of the app itself and the how it just like is a much better platform for like you said community and brand awareness as well and it it's the algorithm is so much better at capturing on the for you page videos based on things that you genuinely like the amount that you watch the video they then continue on your for you page to show you more people that are like that. And I actually think that, I don't know if anyone said this, but TikTok is honestly the video version of Pinterest. It's the same thing, is that what you're typing into Pinterest, what you're looking to search, that is what then curates what shows up on your home feed and what shows up every time that you go into Pinterest. And that's the same as TikTok. And it's also, it's a great place to learn new things. It's the same as Pinterest as well. And in addition to that, it has the exact same type of long lifespan of the content that you're creating because TikTok content, even if in the first couple months, maybe a couple people watch it in a year from now, it could somehow come up on people's for you pages and continue because basically the way that it keeps getting into new audiences is that okay, this little, they test out your content on this little subset of people. If they end up watching a certain amount of it, then it shows it to more people and then more people and then more people. And that's honestly a very similar to how Pinterest works. And so I think that the longevity that you get from the content on TikTok, because even if you post something today, it could go viral in a year from now. And so it, 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 the shelf life is still there. And that's the same as how it is with Pinterest. And I think that people don't invest enough in Pinterest. And I think that they, there's going to be this new wave where people start really seeing that Pinterest and TikTok are really the best for your company in terms of social media. And there's just not that, the competition right now isn't truly there on those platforms like it is on Instagram. So that's why I think that you definitely should be investing in TikTok. I mean, a lot of people say that maybe right now, 
if you haven't already started a presence on TikTok, maybe hold off on waiting to see what else happens. That's fine. I mean, definitely take that advice. I think that maybe if you're only doing a couple sponsored campaigns right now, like maybe wait it out to see, because obviously we don't want to give you advice being like, go put all this money into TikTok and then it just disappears. And you're like, uh, I just wasted all this money. Maybe if you want to be a little bit cautious, then definitely hold off and just see where things go. But maybe right now you start planning what kind of content you want to be created by influencers on TikTok right now, almost like you're planning for holiday. You have to put that planning into it. Do that now. And then so right when you know the fate of TikTok, that's when you can then go and start pushing out this content and working with the influencers that you want to work with. I mean, there are brands right now that I've been reading up on a lot that are that honestly don't really care about the legal side of things. There's also another skincare brand, Peace Out Skincare. They dedicate 30% of their marketing spend to TikTok and even hired an employee to work solely on TikTok because they saw such significant sales from that channel. So despite all the uncertainty, the brand has already planned out their whole TikTok strategy through 2022. Obviously don't focus just on TikTok. You really need to be doing TikTok, Instagram reels, and you know, some, some people are saying, and Triller as well. I think that's really the biggest takeaway is that you can't just commit to one platform. You need to be pushing out the content on all these different platforms, really diversify your channels so that you don't get hurt if something were to happen. I, I totally agree with that. And something that I think that you set, called out that is just such a good point that kind of goes along with our encouraging of diversifying your content and, and diversifying your marketing budget is the, you know, we don't really talk a lot about the longevity of the content. And I think that, like you said, a, a reason why we really, a lot of the times when brands come in and they've never really done social marketing is we encourage them to invest in platforms like YouTube and um, Pinterest because that longevity of that content and finding that content at such a later date is such a higher probability than say on Instagram because it's all about what's happening right now, what stories are current, what I'm just going through my feed. And it's really rare to kind of stumble upon a post that is more than a week or two old. Whereas on YouTube, I can search for eco-conscious skincare or something like that. And it's going to pull up videos that some are from four or five years ago. And a lot of the time, you know, the information there is still relevant and I still am able to find, you know, new, um, new brands that way. So I think, uh, definitely, you know, diversifying your, um, portfolio of what you're investing in is always encouraged, but especially, you know, given that these other platforms have such a, a differing, um, staying power and, and longevity is really important. And I think that's a great call out that TikTok is definitely one of those because you, you know, just because it didn't go viral right off the bat, that doesn't mean that it wasn't a success and you'll continue to see engagement and views um, as time goes on. Yeah, I, on I didn't even think about YouTube. I feel like, honestly like TikTok's like the younger, cooler sister of YouTube. The older sister's YouTube, it's very proper, it's very put together. It's very nicely done video. And then the TikTok's the little sister who's just like, you know, I don't care about anything. I'm just going to put out what, you know, be my true authentic self. But yeah, I mean, YouTube is like a great point as well. And YouTube's had their fair share of legal issues as well. And they're still fine. I mean, I really don't think that hopefully when we go back to watch this video, like in a month, hopefully TikTok is still around and we're making the right predictions. But I mean, in terms of predictions for the future, what do you think is going to end up happening? I think, um, you know, I, to be honest, I kind of go back and forth because I obviously TikTok is going to do everything possible to make sure that they continue U.S. relations um, and, you know, are do everything that the, the government asks them. But I think it's an interesting point that we are close to you know, our election cycle and the administration could be switched out. It could not. So I think that kind of has a lot to do. I think at the end of the day, I would assume, you know, whoever's in office next, if it's different than the current one, you know, the, the, um, the uh, 
keeping our data safe will always be a top priority for any of them. So I, I wouldn't imagine that this, the circumstances would change, but um, yeah, I think TikTok is going to do everything possible. But at the end of the day, I just also think that, you know, their data and kind of their algorithm is really, I believe to be like the secret sauce of why they're so successful. And I think, there will be a time where they're going to have to, you know, truly open their API, truly kind of share the data that they have with the U.S. government and, you know, do things that they really don't want to do for, you know, reasons of why they want to keep, you know, their whatever is keeping them most or making them most successful. Um, so I think, I think it'll be interesting, but um, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, if they do stay, they will continue to be a powerhouse. And I, and I hope that they take this time too to kind of learn from other platforms like, you know, Snapchat that was really compelling at first and really brought in this incredible community, but it kind of faded off because other platforms were able to easily replicate it. Um, I think TikTok is a little bit different just because now that other platforms are able to replicate it, like with Reels, it, it still doesn't necessarily feel the same. Um, but I think that they should take this time too to kind of think about how they're going to grow and expand and kind of maybe offer new features and, you know, make sure that they are also evolving too so they don't get kind of swept away, um, especially with, you know, like we spoke about earlier, their major stars kind of making the jump. Um, I think that they're going to need to kind of be as be compelling enough to to bring them back. Um, but yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, you know, they're going to do everything possible to make sure that they stay. And if they do stay, like I said, I think they're going to just continue to be a powerhouse. They're compelling for so many reasons. And um, yeah, I think these next few months will be telling. I think we're going to need to do an update, probably maybe even next week, because uh, it seems to be changing all the time. But yeah, I mean, do you think that if they stay, they'll continue to be top dog? Or what's your kind of perspective on it all? Yeah, I, honestly, I think that if they are able to create this like TikTok global and just abide by the legal guidelines that they really have to in order to continue being a company in the US, I think that it will blow up. I, I mean, it already in such a short amount of time, it already got so big. There's, there's so much emotion that comes through on TikTok. And I just feel like when it comes to brands trying to continue to create the community around them, they need to be investing in something like people making this raw type of content about how a product or a brand impacts their own life. And you really can get that from TikTok. And, you know, maybe it does end up being where you can get that as well from Reels. I mean, we saw the fact that Instagram stories literally took over Snapchat. It's really hard to predict what's going to happen. But I, I mean, I love TikTok. I love being able to see content from people that I don't follow, but is curated for me. And so I think that if it all ends up working out, that's really what people, what brands should focus on. And they'll, it will, I think it'll explode. If you have any questions for us that, you know, you have any, anything based on TikTok or just any of the other community and coffee office hours chats that we've done in the past, please join our Slack channel. It's called the coffee shop. We have a ton of brands that have joined it. And I mean, they talk about everything. Like if they have a new campaign that's coming up and they need advice from other brands, they'll message each other. And I mean, we've just had such a great community come out of the coffee shop Slack channel. So, or if you have any recommendations for topics that we should cover that you would be interested in learning about, please go ahead and join it. I will put the link for it right here so that you all can go ahead and join it. And we hope to see you there. All right. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Make sure to look at other videos that we upload. Um, we'll constantly be talking about new and exciting things in the wide world of social media.